of the world why do so many people in the world die due to hunger but i suppose the question that if allah subhanahu wa taala if the cherisher and sustainer of the world then why do many people several hundreds of people thousands of people die due to hunger allah subhanahu wa taala is the cherisher and sustainer of the world but we human being we are mischievous we do not have the proper circulation proper distribution of our grains of our agriculture we destroy our grains we destroy our storage and throw it off but we do not distribute the grains which will suffice to the hungry people and they will be saved so it is we human beings who are responsible for that it is not allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah has provided allah has provided risk and it is enough risk for whole of humanity for whole of mankind it is enough but we human beings we do not properly distribute the agriculture and this from the statistics we can come to know in the papers it has come several times that in several places just for the raising of the economy of that grains they store it they destroy it but they do not distribute it i hope this satisfy you assalam alaikum myself abdul qayyum retired professor from ranchi i have especially come here and to this place because i saw when i saw the list of uh, foreign dignitaries so i came to this place but uh, uh, your talk is very relevant to me and i also think on that line uh, out of 99 names of allah only two names are for the punishment as jabbar and qahar that point if you include because he is sustainer and cherisher at the same time when the unbelievers or the even the muslims who do not obey his orders his command then his a uh, punishment comes to us uh, that is if we include that in your uh, talk it will be more uh, forceful for uh, the audience and the in general and the muslims in particular thank you brother has posed a question that i have dealt with the attribute of allah subhanahu wa taala that he is the cherisher and sustainer of the world one attribute of allah subhanahu wa taala but brother says that there are other attributes and i do agree there are other attributes 99 attributes of allah subhanahu wa taala in fact more than 99 attributes one of the persons he had numbered that it is 108 the hadith says that those who memorize and contemplate on the 99 names attributes of allah subhanahu wa taala the glad tidings for them is the paradise but what you have said is that there are other jabbar and qahar that allah subhanahu wa taala punishes allah subhanahu wa taala takes account all these thing yes definitely allah subhanahu wa taala also punishes his just and it, those attributes are also there but it is not possible for me to give you lecture on each and every attribute of allah subhanahu wa taala in one session i have dealt in the subject for the three attributes i have dealt on the video programs the tv talks you will find inshallah on the peace tv that one attribute of rab that is uh, cherisher and sustainer of the world the other that ar rahman ar rahim and the third al qadir all these three attributes i have dealt and you will see in, on the peace tv inshallah but definitely qahar and jabbar are also the attribute where allah subhanahu wa taala says that he will take into account he will punish those who deserve to be punished and in quran we have the system or the way of tablig or giving the message to mankind that giving them glad tidings of the heavens warning them that if they do not do they will be punished for that and for the intellectuals also they have different arguments and intellectually they are invited towards the truth so alhamdulillah you, we can do that also inshallah in future thank you assalam alaikum brother my name is samid ahmed i am going doing computer engineering you said allah sustainer but obvious uh, to but uh, why people are doing uh, dying hungry i know just because of water and what is our role again brother has posed a question that allah is the cherisher and sustainer of the world and then he says that why people are dying out of water and what is our role what should be our role brother again our role will be the same that we should provide water towards those areas where they have no system of water we can have tube well we can have wells we can have that particular social activity on and we should provide that but at the same time what i would say that if there is certain calamity and certain problem like this that 
rain has not taken place and rain is not there and people are suffering in that particular area. What I have to make a point here that since the creation of the universe, since the creation of the world, since the existence of humankind on this world, hundreds and hundreds and crores and billions of years have passed. Humankind is still alive. If the water was not there, humankind would have been finished. But the proof is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given water, sent down water in every period so that this human race survives. And it has survived. This is the proof. But those areas which suffer from it, those areas which die out of hunger, die out of poverty and die out of water, what you can realize, it can be a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also for the misdeeds of those communities. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Rum, chapter 30, verse number 41, Zahr al-fasad fil barri wal bahri bima kasabat aydin naz that mischief, corruption has appeared on earth and on sea because of the deeds of their hands so that they may taste the penalty and return to the right path. So this may be one of the things that they should repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seek repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and definitely Allah is the one who provides sustenance, Allah is the one who sends down water. Don't you see how delicate balance throughout your life, throughout the system is working around you? Who is doing that? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he wants to send down the rain to a particular place and people should not die out of thirst, definitely he will do that. Definitely we should contemplate on ourselves that whether we are committing error and we should seek repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek dua from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, I think one of the sisters has a question, so we'll go over to her. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Nakhiya. I am a medical student. Uh, I want to ask you that ki we Muslim brothers and sisters have faith in God that He has created us and we have to worship Him. But is there any way that we can prove non-Muslims that uh, ki God is the one or Allah is the one who has created them also and they have also to worship them because they have that belief that their God has created them and that they should worship their God. Thank you. Sister has put a good question that we, Alhamdulillah, believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us, He sustains us, He cherishes us, and it is Him we should worship. How can we speak to the non-Muslims and try to prove them that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also created them, and same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cherishes and sustains them, and it is true that it is the same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not different Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, different God Almighty, that we Muslims have one God, the Hindus have different God, and the Christians have different God. It is not that way, it is the same God Almighty who does that. But the Hindus, they will believe that their God, the God that they worship has created. So what you have to do, sister, the last portion of my talk was towards that direction that to realize that this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that he has made the earth, that he has sent down the water, that he is the one who brings forth the vegetation from the earth. Can you imagine the stone that you worship as God? Can that God do all these things? And definitely common answer simple answer that comes to the mind that this stone is impossible to create this earth this stone is impossible to send down water from the sky if they worship a human being again human being as a human being is limited and again this human being is also incapable of doing all these things if they worship any others for example jesus again jesus himself says in gospel according to john chapter 5 verse number 30 i can of my own self do nothing as a year i judge for i seek not my will but my father's will so again jesus himself says i cannot do on my own self so all these things which i have just mentioned in my talk if you pick up and question and reason out with those people whether their deity their god can do definitely those things cannot do yes finally they have to say that it is the creator it is the sustainer it is the lord malik the sifti rachna bhagwan prameshwar he has done so you have to come to conclusion now you have to uh, try to make her or him understand that this god almighty is the one and same god almighty which belongs to everyone and definitely you can speak about concept of god in major religions which we have alhamdulillah detailed explanation about one god in hinduism one God in Christianity, one God in Islam. Alhamdulillah, that will be the best approach to them. Assalamu alaikum. 
I myself, Dr. Ishad. I am a GP. What I want to ask is my internal feeling. Every soul has to take dead, and we have to go either to paradise or hell. Even a pious Muslim don't know where he would go. To spend even a single second in a hell is not a joke. How can we spend a life that is never ending? All I want to ask is. Would not it be better we were not created only? At least no tension about hell. Because I have posed the question that hell is not a joke, and definitely hell is not a joke. To go into hell, take a round in hell for a minute also, it is not a joke. So how can we be tension free and be sure that we will go into paradise? The other aspect he says that it would have been better that we would have not created only, so there is no tension. Whether when you should be asked that whether you should be created or not created before your creation, before you are born, how can this particular question be put to you whether you should be created or not created? See, going to paradise is very easy. Going to paradise is very easy. If you know about Islam, you commit one sin, one guna. If you do a righteous deed, ten, ten plus. So up and multiple times more reward. Alhamdulillah, if you are really on the right path and trying and striving to be on the right path, definitely as a human being you might commit sin, you might commit error. So it is not that you are gone, you are just uh, into hellfire because just because you have committed one error. No, what you have to do, you should be sincerely repentant towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all forgiving most merciful. In Surah Al-Zumur chapter 39 verse number 53 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear that Qul ya ibadiyalladina asrafu Tell my believers who have transgressed their sons La taqnatu min rahmatillah Do not be despair of mercy of Allah Even if you have committed sin equal to the form of the sea but till you repent and seek Forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely forgive you. So why is it difficult for a human being like you that even if you have committed a sin, why it is difficult to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be tension free and go into paradise. That is better, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, did Allah create earth specifically for human beings? Uh, science says that dinosaurs lived millions of years before man, but no scripture mentions anything about dinosaurs. So, are they fiction? Well, there has posed a question that, did Allah SWT create the earth, the universe for human beings and the dinosaurs? Science says that they existed and they are not no more present and is it a fiction? See brother, in science, scientifically from the fossil records and this and that if they conclusively prove that dinosaurs existed as a logical person, as a scientific person there is no harm in accepting that there, such a creature existed in the past regarding whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this particular earth and this universe for human being and the living creatures there is a verse in the Quran chapter 2 verse number 29 it is he who has created for you everything what is there on earth for you, for human being. Whatever there is on earth, it is for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has created for you. So everything, alhamdulillah, it is for the service of humankind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created human being as the ashraful makhulqat, the best of creation. Best of the creation, ashraful makhulqat. Everything is created for human being and he had created human being for himself, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the main goal that we should have. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Mohsin. Uh, Dr. Shweb, I would like to ask you that we all believe that Allah is Rabbul Alameen and today the scientists and the medical doctors, they tell us that the appendicitis or the appendix, the organ which is there, it is of no use. So I couldn't believe that uh, you know it's very difficult to believe that Allah could create such a thing which is of no use so I would like you to throw some light on this brother has put a question that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the cherisher and sustainer of the world and he has created everything for a proper use proper function brother wants to put this question that he has created the appendix in the body and this appendix 
can be operated and removed and nothing will harm you and it can be removed easily. Brother, science is not 100% advanced. It doesn't know everything about human life and everything about the universe. Science is just having knowledge of 0.1% of the universe. This is what scientists themselves say. So to say that we have complete understanding of everything, we cannot say that, we cannot admit that. We do not know the explanation for this appendix, but let me tell you about the circumcision. The similar question can be put about circumcision. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the four skins. When the child is born after the birth, say eight days, after one month, the circumcision takes place. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates a certain thing which he commands that it should be circumcised and removed? This can be the similar question, but the answer today, we know about it. Recently, we come to know that what is the exact wisdom behind it. See, the child in the mother's womb is in flex position. The thighs and everything, the room there is in a flex position. They are very close to each other. The gland penis, the portion which is covered with the foreskin, is very delicate and very sensitive because the nerve endings are maximum two places in the body in the lips and that particular portion which is covered by the foreskin had it been that the foreskin was not there in the mother's womb if it was not there the rubbing of the thighs towards the that particular part which will not be covered would be detrimental, it will be dangerous to the child itself. So it will be dangerous in the mother's womb if the covering foreskin is not there. So Allah SWT rightly, Alhamdulillah, produced or made the foreskin covering that particular portion. After the child is born, this foreskin is now detrimental. Once you pass urine, when you come back, pour your garments, everything, still the droplets of urine are stuck in your foreskin. So that particular part of your body is dirty, is impure. It falls your undergarments, again that portion is dirty, impure. So it is detrimental and because of that, several illnesses, several problems come into existence. The infection, balanitis, phimosis, paraphimosis, and the main problem or main serious illness of that particular portion because of not being circumcised is that he can suffer from CA of that part cancer and the cure or the treatment for that particular part is chopping out if that person suffers from cancer he has to chop out that particular part so you can see that in the mother's womb that particular piece was needed and required when the child is delivered it is now not required detrimental so it should be removed i hope this satisfies you Inshallah, we'll have the last question for the evening from the sister on mic three. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Shabana. Uh, my question is, why does Allah make life hard for some people and they go through extreme hardship while others have relaxed and easy life and they may go to Jannah too? Zazakallah. Sister has posed a question, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes one person's life extremely hard, another person he lives a very luxurious life and he goes to Jannah. Sister, it is not so that the person who is suffering in this world will go into hellfire and the person who is having a luxurious life in this world will go into Jannah. This is not so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the life that we have in this world is a test for the hereafter whether we are rich, whether we are poor, poverty and richness both are test for the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mulk chapter 67 verse number 2 Alladhi khalaqal mawta wal hayata li yabluakum ayyukum ahsanu amla It is he who has created death and life to see which among you are best indeed. In Surah Al-Anam chapter 6 verse number 165 it says that he has created you and he has given some of you more than compared to the others so that he may test in what he has given you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Suratul Anbiya chapter 21 verse number 35 that Kullu nafsin zayikutul maut Every naf shall have taste of death and every shar and every good is a test for hereafter. It is a test for you. So richness is a test for you. Poverty is a test for you. Being poor is more easier test 
compared to the richness a rich person he has to spend his wealth accordingly according to what he is instructed he has to give zakat he has to give charity the poor person he has no money the zakat exemption is there she or he may not pay zakat so the test for the poor person is more easier if this poor person alhamdulillah is on right path steadfast on the right path and practices islam this poor person will also go into jannah there is a several hadith alhamdulillah one hadith i remember that one person comes to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this person was in a shabby clothing not well dressed in a shabby hair and this person was asked about this person that this person if he prays and if he is on the right path definitely he will go to jannah so saying that that person is poor and he faces hardship he will be thrown into hell fire not that way in fact alhamdulillah everything will be taken into consideration on the day of judgment if he had suffered here and alhamdulillah he stood fast allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward in the year after taking to that consideration also i hope this satisfies you inshallah we'll go to the sister at the back may we have your question please assalamu alaikum my name is hina i am a student of tybsc zoology i want to ask that the science said the life is evolved from the amoeba the first thing was amoeba then many evolution has taken out then we are evolved from the monkey then ape then the man was standing it is true sister is posing about darwin's theory darwin who says that man came from ape from monkey sister the complete answer detail answer inshallah you can see my video program on the peace tv by the title darwin's theory true or false here i will just superficially touch few points here that how darwin's theory is not true darwin he was not a qualified person to give this particular discovery or this particular statement he was just an amateur he was interested in natural science natural habitat and he went in a particular travel in hms beagle and he reached a particular land and he saw certain finches there having long beaks and short beaks just because he saw long beaks and short beaks the idea struck in his mind and he said that this is because from generation to generation from one generation to another generation the species 